Um, Sony has made a two hundred and fifty million dollar investment in Epic. Crazy. Which? How uh, much money have they raised now? Um, let's see. It looks like Epic has taken one point eight three billion dollars in investment to date. Give or take, you know, oh, not bad. Uh, I just feel like it's a sign of the times with Epic that I saw that news, and the, my first response was like, "That's it." Like that's got, that's got to be nothing in the context of how much Epic is actually worth at this point. Yeah, uh, and also that's not necessarily money coming from PlayStation. That's that's right. Sony. Sony. Right. That's like, you know, hey, films and television are using the Unreal Engine right. to to do stuff and all that. You know, there's a lot of you know, they they've managed to get the tendrils of the Unreal Engine into a lot of different yes. things. Days, so yes, it's all over the place. Um, you know, Sony used to control, I mean, I don't maybe they still do, but there was an Epic Records that I'm pretty sure was Sony. Oh, God, I forgot about that. So, you know, maybe they're just trying to get that back. It wasn't, wasn't uh, I'm trying to think who was on Epic. I want to say Michael Jackson was, okay. those releases came through Epic. Thinking back to my Columbia cool. House days, yeah. getting yeah. stacks of CDs in the mail for a penny. Um <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, like Sony, you know, Sony does take on a minority controlling stake or ownership stake in Epic with this investment. But like I said, just, you know, in contrast to whatever Epic's actual valuation is at this point, that didn't sound like that much money. Sure enough, uh, I don't know where this came from, but VentureBeat updated their original story uh, later on and said that that $250 million is getting Sony a 1.4% stake in Epic. Which puts okay. which puts the value of Epic at just shy of eighteen billion. Oh, so oh. yeah. Also, just like to kind of give you an indication of how much that company has exploded in the last few years. Uh, you, you know, Tencent is like a pretty mm-hmm. large minority owner of Epic. Uh, mm-hmm. They invested, yeah. So they Tencent invested three hundred and thirty million in twenty twelve, and that got them forty percent of the company. Holy shit. <laughs> And, Shit. and now like two thirds of that investment gets a, a oh. point and a half. I want to go back to that time frame and, and like, just like, what can I like PayPal 20 <laughs> bucks to, to somebody? Hey, Tim Sweeney, I got like, yeah. just like 500 just, bucks. Can I just, oh boy. Chester, $25. Yes. What do I, <laughs> yes. We just whip out this sports almanac and see yeah. uh, what's going to happen next. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's kind of the story. Like, there's not a lot of indication out of this. Like, what, if any, effect that'll have on, like, the relationship specifically between, like, PlayStation and Epic mm-hmm. and the Unreal yeah. Engine? Probably not much. Like, yeah, yeah that's, you know, like, Epic's money is, in, it's you know, if if suddenly your engine is only available on one platform or the other or something like that, like, who's going to use that engine anymore if it suddenly can't make Xbox games or right. does not make them as well or whatever? Like, yeah. you know, that's... There's an impact there, um, and this is not enough money. E- even if that was Sony's intent, this is not enough money to get Epic to do that. So, right. um, yeah, not even close. Yeah, um, yeah, that's not that's Epic's business is in making sure that engine can be in as many different places as possible. It doesn't. It's not. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. This maybe does reframe some of the kind of co-marketing that's happened between PS5 and Epic in, or Unreal Engine in a different yeah. light over the last yeah, few months. But anyway, um, other potential PS5 news. Uh, people have uncovered a patent filed in Japan last year about PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 backwards compatibility via cloud streaming, mm. specifically running, mm. those, running games for those platforms in virtual machines. Okay. Which I, I don't Because like, you know, Parappa was already miserable right. on an LCD screen. Yeah. Uh, even when running on a pl- local platform, why not throw the internet into the middle of that too? Yeah. Uh, Uncharted already felt mushy, so it's a, it's a <laughs> big change. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the PlayStation 5 is powerful enough to run... Uh, PlayStation one, two, and three games natively, not or, or you know emulated there locally. Yeah, like the rumors about the backwards compatibility on this thing have been flying to and fro for ages, and I'm surprised yeah. we haven't heard more definitively about that stuff yet. Um, 
This uh, the Kotaku story where I got this links back to a Eurogamer story from like 2014 about PlayStation Now, and I guess that mm-hmm. service is based on like PS3 based actual like server rack hardware. Oh, right. Boy. So this is this is more of a modern like you know virtual machine based virtualized kind of setup for for those old consoles. But sure. Who knows what that has to do with the PS5 as opposed to maybe just being part of PS Now or if you'd be able to continue to expand PS Now, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah. So and it could very well just be that. Or the Vita 2. Or maybe Android based uh, machine. Two. Maybe we get into some situation where you can authenticate your old game discs hmm. and get something out of it. Who knows? But I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, that doesn't I don't know. That that's the that's the dream, right? But yes. 